Did you know that in Germany, more than 90% of the 14 years ha old have already their own smartphone? So this makes me really safe in assuming that here in the audience, almost everybody has a smartphone in the pocket. Well, we use smartphones every day. We use them for writing emails, for browsing the internet, for storing flight tickets, for taking pictures, and sometimes we even use them for making phone calls. But did you know that smartphones are packed with lots of interesting sensors, like accelerometers, gyroscopes, light sensors, magnetic field sensors, and even pressure sensors, and more. Now, all these sensors have been introduced with a very well-defined purpose. So, for example, the accelerometer is needed for the screen rotation function, while the pressure sensor is needed for in-house navigation. For example, in a shopping mall, the GPS is telling you where you enter the building, but it cannot tell you if you're in the ground floor or the first floor. This is where you need the pressure sensor, which can measure atmospheric pressure and gets information about height differences. And this is how the smartphone knows that you are now in the first floor, second or third, and so it can guide you to the right store you were looking for. Now, I will show you that by having the right app, you can exploit all these sensors for doing more what originally planned. Actually, I will show you that you can turn your smartphone in a true mobile physics lab. Actually, such a smartphone, so I have one with me, is a quite powerful measurement tool. This smartphone here has more than 1,000 times more memory than the space shuttle and many orders magnitude of computing power. Now, all this makes smartphones not only interesting measurement tools, but the fact that literally everybody has them makes them extremely interesting for science teaching and education. Now, science teaching is something which is getting more and more important in our highly technological world. Just think about the Internet of Things. And I believe that improving science teaching and preparing kids for Industry 4.0 is one of the most urgent needs of our society. Now, a basic understanding of science promotes independent and critical thinking, and it teaches us to question what we observe and to verify the difference between facts or as we would say, experimental results and alternative facts. Now, I'm a physics teacher, um, a physics professor at the RWTH Aachen. I'm teaching experimental physics to undergraduates in classes with more than 350 students. And one of the questions I had for a very long time in my mind is how do we get these students? but also school kids and interested fellows like you to be individually involved in experiments. And the answer to this question, or the answer we found to this question, is our free physics app, FIFOX, which actually stands for Physical Phone Experiments, and it allows you to turn your smartphone into, into a physics lab, and actually it allows us to turn you into an explorer in no time. You can do experiments with this app and your smartphone at any time and at any point you wish. And this is something I would like to demonstrate you now. And I will show you a few examples. And I will start now by using this app, and I think what is quite important to note is that we have, as this is made for teaching, we have a built-in remote control. 
So all what I'm going to show you here, you can do yourself at home. There is nothing particular you need. OK, so what you see now here, this is the gyroscope. And you can see x, y, and z axis. And this is really now real time coming the data from this phone. So if I now wiggle around in this direction, you see a signal on the x-axis. If I do it like this, you see now the blue signal changing. This is the y-axis, and now I can turn it in this way, and this is my z-axis. Okay? So this is something you can really do yourself. And now we can already do a very first simple physics experiment, because what we can now do is we can use the gyroscope to measure the periodicity of a pendulum. Okay, I, this is, I just use my headphones. <laughs> okay, and now I can, I can restart this. Let me first delete the data. And now I can restart. And now I can let this oscillate. Let me just, so I oscillate this. Now I try really to get a signal, nice signal in C. You see, it's, I'm not perfect. But you can see there's now an oscillation popping up here. Now we can do already some basic analysis. If we go now to the autocorrelation, which is a very nice mass tool for extracting frequency, you see I'm now getting a pretty stable frequency signal here. And my pendulum has a frequency here of 0.74 hertz. Now, you also know if I make now, we can go back to the raw data for a minute. And what you can see is if I go and I'll make it shorter, then I can actually get the frequency increased. If you go back to autocorrelation, you see that now we are close to one hertz. So everybody who knows a bit of science knows that actually this depends on the lengths. And if we do this now for many, many different lengths, we can actually really looking at the dependency. And this is something I have been doing in my class. So I really ask the students uh, to do this experiment at home and provide the data of frequency and lengths. And now what I just showed you is one or two data points on this plot. And so I asked them to do this experiment and return all the data. And that's actually, so this is the class. And these are the data points we got. What you can see, there are three theoreticians, okay, <laughs> which have problems in doing this experiment. But all others are actually very nicely on the yellow line. And this is actually the small angle approximation, which I've been discussing in class after students have been doing the experiment. Now, this is one example, uh, but we can do much more. So actually, with a smartphone, you can do almost all the mechanics experiments Galileo Galilei uh, was discussing in the early 17th century in one afternoon. And by the way, it's interesting to think that one of the biggest problems Galilei had was to measure accurate time intervals. It was uh, quite unfortunately that the pendulum clock, which was the first accurate way of measuring time, was invented 15 years after his death. So nowadays, measuring time is not a big problem anymore. And uh, with our app FIFOX, we have a very nice way of measuring time. And uh, the way how we implemented it is that we can use an acoustically triggered stopwatch. Simply by clapping, you can start. And by a second clap, you can stop. This doesn't sound fancy, but it opens up a huge area of possible experiments. I just want to show you one such experiment. And uh, this experiment is based on a bouncing ball. So what I will, I will now start this experiment. So it's called the inelastic collision. And I go again, remote access. And what you should see now are actually these time stamps here. This is what we will measure. And what I will now do I will measure the times between several bounces of this golf ball. And by measuring the time, we can very easily calculate the height the ball had in between 
And by having a sequence, we can actually extract the kinetic energy which got lost on each bounce. And this way, we can extract back the original height of the ball. So let me just do this. I have to be quiet because uh, this is the acoustic signal comes now from this ball. So I start this now. So you see that the time intervals between the first and second bounce was 0.4 seconds. And then you see that the next bounce difference in, on the time scale were 0.3 and so forth. And we can now calculate all other quantities. And I think the most interesting one is already nearly 60 centimeters. And this comes pretty close to where I was actually uh, having the ball at the beginning. Now, I'm not going into the physics here, but you can do this at your kitchen table. And I can guarantee you that you can discuss at least one hour or two on really figuring out what, what is all going on here. Now, let us come to a bit of a more complex experiment. And this is now one of my favorite experiments, which is the salad spinner. Uh, so we can also kind of plot quantities against each other. So the smartphone can measure acceleration, but it can also measure angular velocity. And this way, we can um, study the dependency on how the acceleration depends on the angular velocity. So you all know these pictures. And if you rotate the salad, then the water droplets actually get kind of for forced to leave the salad leaves. And actually, this acceleration the water droplet feels is directly proportional to the velocity squared divided by the radius. Or we can also rewrite this by the radius times the angular velocity squared. And I will not show you here the salad spinner. I think you can use the salad spinner at home. But I will show you how the data look like. And I have here a simplified version. So let me just start now this experiment. Please keep this equation here in mind, because we really want to see the dependency of the acceleration as function of the angular velocity. Now I can start this. Let me again go to remote access so you can see the data. And now I'm starting to collect data. So you see now on the upper panel, you see the acceleration as function of angular velocity and below, and now as function of omega squared. So I start rotating, and you start seeing that now I really, this is on real time. So I'm kind of, if I go now faster, you see that the data points are actually popping up at higher angular velocities. OK, you have to be careful not damaging your phone. But you can go faster and faster and faster. And you can nicely see, let me go. And what you can nicely see now is that on the blue trace here, you get a really nicely linear slope. And the slope of the, in this plot is directly given by the radius. And so these are type of experiments you can really nicely do at home. Now, let me come to my very last example I would like to demonstrate here. And this is the pressure sensor. Uh, as I mentioned before, this pressure sensor, so this here is now the pressure sensor. So it measures now the pressure of my phone, see. So if I put now my hand up, the pressure actually goes down. OK, you can do this really with your phone. And if I put it back, here, then you see that the pressure starts increasing. And if I put the phone further down, you also see the pressure starts increasing further. So this is something which is very accurate. And it is needed for in-house navigation, where you have several levels. But it also allows us to do a very elegant physics experiment. And this is my, I will show you a video. Because what we can do with this sensor, we can use the elevator as a tool for doing an experiment, because we can measure in an elevator the height difference as function of time with the pressure sensor. We can take the first derivative, which gives us the velocity we go up, and independently, we can measure the acceleration. So that's what you will see here. So this here is the acceleration. Uh, and here we have the velocity. 
And this here is the height from the pressure sensor. You see, I'm entering here the, um, the elevator. Now here it got accelerated for a short time. Now the, the velocity is now constant at 1.5 meters per second. And you see it goes up, up, up here, 10 meters, 15 meters. And it, now here we have the 20 meters. And now the elevator gets stopped. You see here the signal of the negative acceleration. And you see this entire experiment takes 30 seconds. And these are textbook uh, plots you can see on your phone. Well, there are ma many more experiments, uh, and you can find them on our website. And I'm sure you can enjoy playing with these experiments uh, with, uh, with your friends and family. And um, so be bold and think like a scientist. Observe facts and start experimenting with the world around you.